Right, I have to uh, put this um, for posterity because this is a marvellous, marvellous idea that Lisa has come up with. And it's all Lisa. I just cannot believe I executed the actual craftsmanship. But So we had an issue here. So this here, this is a false wall, which we kind of don't want to remove. Um, because of the pipe work and everything like that in there, there's not a lot of point in removing. We could we could have taken it out, I suppose, and could have done whatever, but we don't want to do it. So, so, but the problem was, is how to get that boxed in, this area here, which is a bit of a mank. It's a bit horrible, right? Okay. So I put this piece of timber in so I could secure some kind of plasterboard to it. Um, and I'm thinking, oh, how am I going to secure it to this side? And we need it to go all the way and it come off this line. So you can't really see the line of the, the window reveal, but um, it's similar to upstairs. And I was thinking, how am I going to do it? Da, 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 da. Then Lisa comes up with a cracking idea is to, now I've got to show you this because it's just really hard, probably hard to put together. So what she did, she got a piece of board, she cut it down the back, and then I chamfered both edges. I'm doing this one-handed, but forgive me. I chamfered both edges, which then gives you a complete piece of board, but with a lovely angle on it. And when we put that in there, Baby. You come and hold something. Oh, oh, really? Come and hold something. <laughs> hold that up there like that. It's a so, family show, baby. Look at that, look at that, look at that, look at that. So what we even thought, that we thought about how, you know, brilliant that was. But what we're going to do is come off of there and okay. map, yeah, put the whole piece in here. Let me get above her head. Put a whole piece in there so I can map that to the wall. I dot and dab that to the wall, screw that in the side, and we're all finished. And Bob's your uncle, you've got your perfect angle. You've got a perfect angle with so two pl bits of plasterboard don't need to join because I've got this here. I'll tell you what, the only thing I'm worried about is the amount of plasterboard I'm going to ruin trying to get that right. <laughs> So maybe I should let her do it. What do you think? What do you think? Should I let her do it? No, nah, she didn't do it. I did it. But she had the idea. Old oh, Bright Spark had the idea. <laughs> How fantastic is that? It's not often it happens. <laughs> and and because she had that idea, she had she was so freaked out she had to go and lie down. <laughs> Your brain was out enough yeah, that yeah, one. Yeah, yeah. I could almost hear it working. <laughs> Okay, so last week, um, at the end of last week, you saw that I didn't get done three of the jobs that was on my list. Um, and thankfully, um, I've now been able to get most of those jobs done. Let's just take you for a quick look. So, all the ceiling has now been finished, all the tape and jointing, even the, uh, the edge. I've just got to take the tape off now, but that's all been done. As you can see, tape and jointing all around the room has been finished. Now, obviously, there'll be more tape and jointing once Ted does the window wall. Um, but that'll be a later date. But at the moment, I'm up to speed. The kitchen area has all been finished with the tape and jointing. It's all been mist coated. Um, I'm just waiting to finish this mist coat on this wall. But um, Ted is working there at the moment. Um, in the bathroom, the bathroom doorway has now been finished. Again, I've just got to mist coat this wall. Um, and the bathroom has all been mist coated. And all the tape and jointing is finished. Now, the reason why this area has not been miscoated. is this is the area that needs to be tanked. So that is my next job. Okay, so we're in the bathroom. Job now is to tank the bathroom, which means to waterproof it. 
Although we've used green board, which is a water resistant um, plasterboard, really it's just a bit of belt and braces. This solution, which is called tanking, um, is again another waterproof membrane. So we're going to put it on the walls where the shower is going to go um, and put it on the floor as well. The reason why we put it on the floor is this is going to be a very large kind of walk-in shower with just a screen. So we're going to do the whole of the floor just again for belt and braces just to make sure that nothing's going to go get through. Um, so yeah, it's literally put it on, paintbrush or roller, whatever you prefer. I'm putting it on with a paintbrush. Um, and uh, yeah, slap it on. The only thing you do have to make sure is that you do not get it in areas where you want a smooth paint finish. So what I do need to do is make sure that I cut in properly in the tops and along the edges where the tiling will stop. Because um, when you paint over tanking, it, it's not a smooth finish, it's not a nice finish. So, um, so yeah, so I've done a line down where I want the tanking to stop to make sure I don't go over it. Um, yeah, let's crack on. As you can see, it's a real gloopy sort of, yeah, green, lovely green colour. Get it in pink as well. Yeah, we did that. The last one we did that was in pink, wasn't it? Yeah. Right, so the job for today is to board the outside of the bathroom um, because we are at that stage, which is really nice. Um, I obviously schoolboy errors and all that sort of business. Um, you don't know what you're doing. I've put the beams in wrong, um, so I had to lay the boards that way, which is something that I didn't necessarily want to do. However, it has enabled me to cut in to the beams and make it slightly easier to cut in with the beams because you haven't got the weight of the plasterboard, you haven't got a full sheet of plasterboard. Because this is, um, this is, under, under a full sheet of plasterboard. So, the idea would be is to cut a full sheet in there and then to cut the beams in. However, I've laid them that way. It's worked out fine for me. Um, I think I've done all right. And what I had to do at the top here is obviously cut them into the beams. Now, I really didn't really know how to do it. So I sat here and deliberated for a bit and then thought if I put my laser level up and measure off down to the laser level, I wouldn't be far away. Which would get me, what I like to do in these situations is get me in the ballpark. Because at the moment, when you do it, when you look at it, you think uh, you haven't got, how the hell am I gonna do this? How the hell am I even gonna get close to that? So doing what I've done, which is measured off the laser line, and you see the laser line there, Measure off the laser line, and that's the top of the other board, this one here, um, on the tapered edge. And then I measured off and measured off, and then you gingerly take pieces out, and you know, you be slightly creative. And eventually, it fits in there.
So that is in, it's really tight. I will take it out and show it to you. However, it's really, really tight in there and I've got to just gently bang it in there. Where you, what you do is you put a block up. Um, so where it's really tight, you can get a block of wood and just, just gently tap. And of course the plasterboard will just push out and because it just breaks a little bit but and get it in there really really nice and tight and uh, the idea is because of my better half has to do the table jointing or she has to fill the edges the some of these gaps are so tight there's almost a thought that she won't have to fill at all Woohoo! so she'll be well happy there so like for instance one of these two here these are two you know just slightly down the beam side you might have to put a little bit of cork. I think that's all you have to do. But uh, yeah. And then this, you've got a gap. Can a you? Slight, um... slight gap down this side. However, we're going to dot and dab this now. And so that, that edge will be covered up. Can you just explain why? Because I know there's going to be quite a few people that will say, why don't you use one of those things like the ones the I bought you? The, yeah. yeah, the profilers. Yeah. Uh, the profilers are really good, however, um, I found them to be, I, you know, maybe it's me not, not using them or not, not taking the time to really use them properly, but it's, um, they tend to be a little bit, you know, wibbly wobbly, as it were, um, whereas painstakingly measuring each, each of the thing, and the nice thing is it's, I find this just a bit better. As you see, if I put my tape measure up against there, my laser line gives me exactly what the measurement is. I'm up to speed with all the jobs that were supposed to be done last week. Um, it is, what's the day today? Thursday today. So we're coming towards the end of the week. So it's taken a bit of time. Um, but I'm now on to the next job. And um, this, well... It's an area, luckily, yesterday, I had Karen round, Karen and Dave popped round to help us with a few bits, um, and Karen cleaned all the beams up for me, which was a great help, because that's kind of put me forward, that's given me sort of half a day back, because um, that's what I'd be doing now, but instead, I can get straight on with the job that I need to do, which is infilling above the beams. Now, there's big gaps above where the beams go through from the ceiling, the joists go through from the ceiling above the extremely large beam. And um, there is a lot of cold air that comes through there, so it needs to be infilled. And the best way to do it, I think, is the tiles that we have outside. Um, we still have the pile of tiles that we haven't taken to the Shettery yet um, from when we did the roof. So I'm going to pick some of those tiles out infill it with those tolls and then map over the top um so so yeah that that's the job that i'm going to start today probably won't finish today because it's quite a big job and we're now in the afternoon um so um so yeah i'll i'll get started and um show you along the way what i'm going to be doing okay so these are the tolls left over um all cracked tiles that came off the roof. So I'm gonna pick out some bits that uh, that might be good to use for the infilling. Um, and um, and then we'll take you inside and show you what I'm gonna do. Oh, look, little lizard running along there. Oh, quite a few little lizards. So I kind of want bits like this. Um, some uh, thin bits, thick bits, whatever I can find that I might be able to infill with. Um, map it in. Now mapping is kind of um, an adhesive. I'll show you in a minute. But um, yeah, it's a very good source of uh, doing this sort of thing. Okay, so this is what we use. Map. Mortier adhesive, MP1. Um, and uh, you mix it up with water and form a 
this kind of creamy consistency. A bit like icing. So these are the holes that I was talking about that need to be filled. Um, so as you can see, I've taped off the areas along the beam so I can try and not get it onto the beam because it's really hard to get off wood once it dries. So I've taped it all off and um, that one's quite a big hole. So uh, yeah, let's start getting the tolls and seeing what I can put in. So I've got one of my towels here and this is what I'm going to be doing. Popping the tile in there with the adhesive and building it up until it fills this hole. Um, and then it will be mapped over the top. So the map will come from the ceiling to join the beam. So there's a hole with all my bits shoved in it. it. Looks a bit of a mess at the moment, but then we're going to cover it over the front with map and, um, and it'll look a lot better. So I filled the holes, put the map in, and then what you want to do is take the tape off before it sets fully. Now it's a bit like clay consistency at the moment, uh, which is the right consistency, because it means then I can take a paintbrush, which is wet, and mould the edges down into the beam. Now the point of this is, is if you leave the tape on and then take it off, it will go too hard, and you won't be able to get the tape off. So this way you get the tape off, you still get a clean edge and you could just mold the bottom of it into the beam. Like so. Hey, teddy bear's been in the workshop all day. What have you been making? Your kitchen. Well, the little cabinet that you wanted. Um, so this has all been made out of reclaimed stuff and bits and pieces that I had. So it don't look very pretty at the moment, but so this wood here, this is oak, but this was off an old table that we found, and I just pulled it all apart because I didn't want the table. The table was a bit naff. Actually, it was a um, sideboard. Remember a sideboard, and I pulled all the bits and pieces and I thought, oh. I use them sometime, and then I thought, because I've had such problems with the wood that I bought, I thought I'd use some nice old dry, flat, straight, cut, carved it up a bit. Um, ubiquitous floorboards to make the other stuff that you won't, hopefully won't see, apart from the bottom there, which I'm going to stain up. It's a little kit board. Um, so this is to go underneath here, to go underneath the the. Um, uh, where the sink is and everything else. Um, I'm seriously hoping that it fits because I don't think it, I've just, uh, so the way I've done it now, I've just realized that I've completely screwed up and it won't fit the sink in. However, that's not a problem because I should just brace it and back out. Fine, not a problem. Um, the other thing was is that this is level this is where the worktop's going to go, but the floor is not. So it would be making legs different sizes. So what I've done is I've put, actually put, um, if you can see this, little adjustable feet on the bottom. Oh, clever boy. Um, only this, literally there, there, just to wind up this side so it makes this level. Um, so it makes it level, so it looks fine. It doesn't really matter whether it's level or not. And the other bits, um, so I just need to indeed wind those up a bit, and they should be about where they should be. So the idea is to go under it, um, like that. And it fits in. Like that. Cool. So that means we can take it out. You, are you going to fix it in? I or... can fix it in. It really I'm just thinking if you have it removable, then obviously then we can get to pipes behind it if we ever well, need to. You know, I wasn't going to necessarily put a back on it. Um, but, you know, and then, so what we do now is that, that Lisa wanted two shelves. 
So this, you may or may remember, is what came on top of the cabinets that we bought for the kitchen, for the tea room kitchen. Uh, we took those off because we put the worktop directly and screwed the cabinets to the worktop, which is traditionally what you do. But these actually came with their own worktops and I thought, well, I could go out and buy shelving to, to look, but kind of, you know, we, we're doing a sort of, there's a bit of grey in here. So the idea is that I would use these. Of course, I'm not going to go in. Um, and and then they would make, you know, their shelves that she wanted. And there's a slot in there. And this also makes it really nice and, and weighty. Um, so it doesn't necessarily move around. Clever. Um, there you go, so that's that. A bit all over the place, but. So that's your two shelves. And I understand that. So we'll clean up the face, and face to make it look sort of nice and oaky. And I've done this sort of oak side, so the bit's where you'll see. And it's just, it's not full length because we thought what would be nice is we need access probably to the end, to the barrel because this is where we turn the water on and off, which I've made something to go in here. But also, this is a nice little space just for a bin or something like that. But there you go. That's that done. So that's going to have kind of access panels on it, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, that'll have so access, access panels. There's one already done. The one, I'll probably do one tomorrow, although I didn't want to do it until I put the worktop in because I was going to sort of slot the worktop maybe into here. So leave it open for And me. then, yeah, and then put the, the thing on there so it would just finish it off. Cool. And so, yeah, the worktop will come out. The worktop comes out to 6.30, 6.35, which is, funny enough, for up near the end. Very good. We hope. Because nothing is what it seems. <laughs> nothing is what it seems. Morning. Morning. So it's Saturday morning. We're going to give you a summary of what we've been doing this week in here and where we're at. Um, have a quick look through where we're going to leave it at this week because it's a beautiful weekend. And Monday, we've got, oh no, Tuesday, we've got a special visit. Uh, we've got a visit from Sadipa, who's the regulatory board for septic tanks. Mm -hmm. Is that right? Mm -hmm. And they're coming to have a look at where we want to put the septic tank. And um, we did have a guy that was supposed to be coordinating for, so let's give you the whole story about this. We did put by, originally, out of our original budget, we put by £12,000 to do the septic tank because that's the quote that we had so we knew that was money that had to come out of it so that was always put aside however we then had a guy that said to us you could do it yourselves i can coordinate it you could do it yourselves um and it should come in around six seven grand so you're going to save yourself a lot of money now as you know we have no budget left so if we can claw that money back that would be absolutely brilliant, wouldn't it? Yeah, fantastic. Um, it is a lot of hard work. We need to call in a lot of favours, which is why we've been doing a lot of favours for everybody else, so we could call them back in. Um, but, yeah, he's supposed to be here to coordinate it. So he's supposed to be here on Tuesday to see this woman who doesn't speak English, who's going to talk to us about the regulations, where we can put the septic. Um, because we've got a water source at the end, the lake, there's a lot more stringent regulations um, for where we can put it and what we need to do with it. He's now not gonna be here. He's gone on the missing list. Um, so, as he tends to do quite a lot. So, um, yeah, we're a bit sort of stuck. So we need to sort of get ourselves up to date as to the plans and where we want to put it. So we're gonna spend the weekend, go out back and, um, and put some stakes in and yeah, try and plan it ourselves, aren't we? We gotta do a bit of clearing first. Yeah. So we can have, um, so we can see. The, <laughs> see the wood for the trees as it were. But yeah, that's, um, we need to do that because of the visit on Tuesday. 
So that's why we're going to down tools in here, spend the weekend outside, and um, so let's give you a quick upshot of where we're at now. Talk us through your um, wonderful projects this week. The uh, window. So yeah, the window, um, which is a bit of a trial, but um, as I said, uh, with at least brilliant idea, enabled us to get some lovely clean corners um, of the reveal. Um, I had to take, if you remember, there was all the tiles on here. So we boarded this all out, which was a relatively simple project, apart from cutting in the tops, which I was very pleased with myself. That's one of the highlights of my week, to be honest with you. Cutting in those, and look how fantastic. I think they look brilliant. I, I just, oh, I don't know. That looks absolutely exceptional. Right? You know, really, you know, that is, that is a proper, me and you, that is, isn't it? That's that one is. of our, one of our, that's, I'm proud of what I've done, and I'm proud of what you've done, and hopefully vice versa. Well, the fact that you cut them in so tightly meant that actually doing the tape and jointing on it was um, was really easy. Yeah. And I love the way they look like they're just going straight into the wall. Yeah. You can't see where the ceiling and the wall I starts and what, finishes. You know, like, if somebody had said, if, if we had a... a a professional come and do that. I'd, I'd go, look at that. That's lovely. That, I'd be well happy. What, yeah. What a really nice job he's done there. Yeah, you know, really. And that's me and you. <laughs> I'm, I'm too united. <laughs> <laughs> Just shows you can do anything you put your mind <laughs> to. And, and, and Lisa's done a band army round here. I tell well. you what, as well. I am so pleased, impressed with how crisp those edges are. Yeah. Yeah, they, they, you know, and when you think about this is going to be a barn door on here. Yeah. Um, that, that to have those really tight lines there, I don't know why you didn't paint the bottom bit, but... Um, oh, because I just didn't know what you was doing, whether that's just being like that or whether you, it's going to... Yeah, yeah, it's got to just be like that, so... Yeah, the thing is, we are, this is, again, um, we don't know the unknown. I've never, I've never done one of the sliding doors. I've never made one. I've never fitted one. Um, I don't. I know the mechanics of it. I know what's supposed to happen. Um, it's quite a big door because obviously it's got to go floor to ceiling. It's going to be a little bit off the ground, but it's got quite a big door. So that's that's going to cause its own problems because the preferred method of making them out of floorboards, floorboards is only two meters, and this is two point one three. Um, so that's going to be interesting. Um, but. We were saying that, you know, when I lined the other ones, you know, we thought, well, no, let's plasterboard this because you get this lovely crisp. I think it's opening. lovely, yeah. We don't know whether it's going to be absolutely flush to the wall yet. I'm not certain, you know, or I put some kind of architrave on it. I really don't want to because this looks so lovely so good, and clean, yeah. you know, and, and, and all that sort of thing. So back to the window. So, yeah, so all of that is done. And then, obviously, we had to do the window just because this was covered in, in render that, you know, we'd have gone down to the stone and we would have been in the same position anyway. So we just boarded over the top. Um, so that's... But then, then, if you remember here, there was a row of uh, those blue tiles that Lisa likes and then uh, a board here, which created its own challenges because they wouldn't the tiles wouldn't come off the board because I wanted to do that so I had to take all of that off and re put put these on and would you believe I used the same raw plug holes for me timber just got place for that and then to, to to cut in the board and it was a very you know very strange angles off of here very strange angles off of here this wall finished as you see this line here I had to inset a piece of wood and to do all that. So it's a right pain. It took a lot longer than I was hoping. But it looks but really good. It looks okay. And can you just explain what you're going to do underneath that window? So this now is going to be, um, it's not really at the height for a seat, but what we are going to do is we're going to put something in there and we're going to make like a blanket box. So we're going to box in the pipe work that we've done, probably run straight through, because it just makes sense, although it's on a little bit of a funny angle. Um, but then we're going to make that a lid. But we're going to you know, you're to sit on it, use it as a, as a like a shelf, as a window shelf. But obviously, it's going to be like a a, a blanket box, you know. So it's going to be more storage, yeah. good. Yeah, it's, it's always handy in a place where you haven't got a lot. Yeah. 
Okay, carry on. So uh, around, uh, so that's the other thing is that I wasn't too frightened about leaving certain gaps in here because I've got somebody who really knows how to do the tape and join in. So we got everything done we wanted done here. This was all boxed in, this was last week, you saw this. But it's all been painted now, it's all been miscoated. Um, it's miscoated. We had a little bit of an issue with getting some power in there. Then I framed out the top to, to take the work top. Sink is gonna go here, tack's gonna go here. And then I spent yesterday, um, which was you know a little bit longer than I wanted again, but I just wanted to get it right. I didn't want to have to do it again. And you know, as I said, issues with my timber before, I've used reclaimed oak for the bottoms and then me, me floorboards on the bottom. Little little bits and pieces to do on that, but I'm relatively happy with that. And all the uh, mist coatings now done, all, all, all the seams done. done. This, obviously, this area we're still keeping open um, because we've got to run our data cables. Thanks, Steve Harris. You're a diamond for what you've done. Um, uh, for letting us know, for one thing, and for also what you've done, and you know what you've done. But yeah, so we're leaving that all open at the moment because that goes up into apartment three. So it's a little bit of an access point at the moment. But the idea is to box this in in a nice little jiggy angle here. Jiggy angle. Yeah. Big, biggest issue at the moment is the fact that, watch my hand. <laughs> <laughs> We've got rather a big gap. But the fact that we put that board in, me and Lisa did it. I don't really, we'll, we'll deal with that at a later date. That's whatever we do, we do. You know, it's not it's not too pro, too problematic. But that's that's it, so we're, we're fairly well down the line. It, I know it doesn't look it. Hang on a minute, mister. But, Hang but on a minute, mister. I'm a, little bit, I'm a little bit annoyed, I'm a little bit annoyed that I haven't done the boarding on the back. Um, but that's me done, so we're fairly well done. There is one thing that's a major issue that we've done. Lisa's done all this ceiling, and again, we had somebody down All recently. the tape's off now. We I am somebody, really pleased well, with Well, we had somebody down. Let me say this. Is, stop blowing your own trumpet. Woman. <laughs> uh, we had somebody down recently who came in here and went, oh, my God, who did your ceilings? And, and I said, well, we do them. You know, we, it's a combined effort. You know, this one's a combined effort of three people, Dave, Dave and Karen come and they battened, but doing the boarding, doing the table jointing, and infilling above the beams is done by Lisa. And they were going, it's incredible. It's amazing. I love the way you do your ceilings. And because you retain all the character and you retain the curve of the, you know, the, the, the building. The curve of the building, the way the building settled, the way it's happened, we still return, you know, retain all that curve, and it is an, an immaculate job. I'm sorry. It takes a long time, but it's well worth it's a, it, isn't immaculate it? Immaculate job. And so this, we're finished. This filling in the beams, as I said the other day, I don't know whether people would do that. You know, and to that extent, you know, that is all. That is all. You can, you know, that is all. Some idiot put the board all the way in, didn't bother thinking about the holes in there. Because again, he's got this professional woman to come along and do the rest, <laughs> it, you know, to tidy it all up. But that is infilled with, with stone or plasterboard or anything that will fill the gap, is then mapped over the top and then feathered in with a brush and then it is painted. And it just looks incredible. There's a couple to do. Yeah, I've got two left to do down the bottom. I'd run out of it is very, It's an incredible time-consuming job. Um, yeah, ran out, ran out, ran out of it. That's the thing. You can only mix up so much map because it goes off quite quickly. But the good thing about it is it goes off rock hard, which is yeah. which is great and very useful when you've got very peculiar angles. So that's that's it, really. That's um, us up today in here. We're coming along great, isn't it? We are behind. We're about. Four weeks behind on well, what we wanted. But I think yeah. the apartments, uh, uh, to be honest with you, I think that's my fault because I put the timescale on it. And I have to say, 
I didn't take into consideration how many sort of table joint in corners there was, the wood, I, there's a lot of work in this apartment that needed to be done. And yeah, I think I um, overestimated how quickly we'd be able to do it. But, um, it's, but uh, yeah, it's a fiddle fest. Yeah, this one. It's, it's, fiddle it, fest. It's, <laughs> it's, it's, um, it, it, it really is, yeah. It, you know, I, I'm sure if we'd have had, you know, things, things do get in your way and s slow you down and all that sort of thing. But, I think we're, you know, we're a couple of weeks away from finishing. So, let's get outside and see what we can do out there. Let's see what damage we can do outside. <laughs> Are you filming? Yeah. If anybody knows of anybody that makes a left-handed uh, contraption for one of these, it'd be really, really good. I'd like the one with the handlebars. Dave's got one with the handlebars. But again, they're geared up for right-handed people. You know, it's just that these... This I've had to sort of, I kind of thought I swapped it over, but maybe I... Maybe our engineer friend, Mr. Mobs, could come up with an idea that you could make. Yeah, you see, it's just because, you know, that, I think that's supposed to be, it just don't work. You know, I suppose I could have just a ring. But then you've got that bar that's sticking in your crutch. It does happen often. <laughs> Um, yeah, so you know, that, but I'm sure I'd swap. I thought I swapped it over there, but you can't because it then pokes out the other way because of the fixings. Right, uh, so this is the back of the house. Um, as you can see, we're right down the far end at the back. Um, up there is the immediate garden and the other 12th century side. Um, so coming down here, this is the area that eventually we want to clear and have as a private area for residential guests and this will be where one day when we can afford it the swimming pool will be um, along here is where we've got the stone wall um, that is covered over at the moment and we want to one day rebuild that I keep saying one day but um, this is you know it's all uh, still one day, one day. it's all yeah it, it will eventually happen so anyway going round This is all the area that we need to try and clear today. Got the old uh, apple tree in blossom, but that is going to have to actually come down. It is, um, it's not really in the ground anymore. It's, uh, it's... It's when, this is, that's when obviously Damier came and knocked the brambles down. He knocked the tree down, yeah. but it's got to come out anyway because um, you can't have obviously fruit trees in an area where a septic tank's going to be. So the septic tank is currently up there. If you can see the pipes that are coming through the wall, the septic tank's up there. And it's a tiny septic tank that um, would probably only do a one, two bedroom house. Um, and is all cracked and everything anyway. So uh, it needs to the first job is to get that emptied, lovely, and then fill in the area. The new septic tank will go in this area here, and the epandage, the filter bed, will then come down and will go all the way down. Now our problem is we've got to walk out and measure how far it is from the lake down the bottom, because it can't be less than 35 meters away from a water source um, so that is our problem is whether it's going to fit so we've got to measure that out but while we're up here as well this is the building at the back that we told you about that we we can't get into um, and everyone keeps saying you know we had so many comments how can you leave it as you can see it's got an opening at the top there but it has no sign of any doorway or any en other entryway. Um, and the reason we can leave it, we're desperate to find out what's in there, but there is more pressing things. And, you know, as we know with this property, every day it brings up something new that we discover and find. And if we let ourselves get distracted by all those new findings, 
we'd never get any work done so it will happen it will happen but um just not not right now let's see how we get on this weekend <laughs> let's face it, we know how easily lisa is distracted <laughs> Lisa does get distracted very easily. Um, okay. Try and strip some edges and round some trees. And so because we, we're going to try and get the... Uh, we're going to bring the tractor down, but we can't do any of this because these huge stones will just muller the thing. But we so... Do you want me to try and find any stones and any... What yeah, is that concrete thing there? That's, what... that's where the old gas tank used to be. Oh, right. So that's empty, is it? That's nothing's under it or in it or well, we don't know. on it or We don't what? think so. Look at this beautiful stone wall. That all needs to be remortared one day. One day. One day. We should have a t-shirt of that made up, shouldn't we? One yeah. day and crack on. <laughs> crack on. Let's crack on. An AFP. Yeah, does anyone yeah. know what AFP means? That's does Ted's... anybody know what AFP means? Answers, answers on a postcard. As Ted's new saying. Yeah, I don't AFP. think you can put it in the uh, in the comments. I think people should be able to suss it out, AFP. Um, can you have a look at me back? Handsy boy. Too hot for you today, isn't it? It's a very hot day today. So one of the problems we do have with the ground here is that there are just huge pieces of stone everywhere. Everywhere you look. Just uh yeah, huge pieces of stone. Now obviously the digger will be able to uh to dig them out. Um, but the problem is getting the broyer in and the tractor, that won't like these big pieces of stone. So we need to try and move as many of them as we can find out of the way. What, baby? It's, um, all of these branches and stuff, they need to come up because the, 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 the tractor won't like them either. Okay. So, you know, anything that you think is, you know, over, the, over that thickness, stick it in your palm. Yep. So, these huge pieces of stones that we, we've spoken about, that we keep finding, piles of them um, all around, makes you wonder why are they here, where do they come from? Is it just the fact that we know that old buildings used to be built on a stone quarry so that the stone was readily available when they built the properties? Is it the fact that this wall was a lot higher um, in its inception and it's crumbled over the years and the stone's just laid here? The other thing to think about is we know that in its inception Mormania was a village in its own right and um, with over 250 acres with lots more buildings and four towers. Three of those we know was demolished in 1626 by Cardinal Richelieu but where those towers were we don't know. Could it be that some of this stone that we keep finding in piles and uh, areas that are, are full of crumbled stone, especially huge stones like this, could it be they were part of one of the towers? Um, which is a bit worrying to the fact that we need to move some of the stone. But I really don't want to because if we was to get um, some geophysical mapping done, then it could be that it shows us where those towers were. And it could be that we find that actually we've moved the stone that was part of a tower or part of another building. Um, I haven't found any any pieces of stone yet that look like dressed stone. So that would be amazing if we found a piece of stone that looked like it was a dressed stone. And what we mean by dressed stone is something that was carved for, for a purpose. So a doorway, a lintel, a frame. Um, that would be absolutely fantastic if we did find um, a piece of stone that looked like a dressed stone. But we, we haven't as yet. But then we haven't... We haven't really examined the stones that are here um, and you know this was one whole stone by the looks of it that, um, that is cracked in half. Some of them are huge pieces, um, some of them are a lot smaller but that's how they built um, walls and houses is through having the larger stones on the bottom, 
smaller stones as infills. So yeah, it's um, it's always mind boggling that you can't just look at this stone and think of it as just a piece of stone because you just don't know what it was one day. And now that we've uncovered this wall, look how amazing it looks. You know, this is just going to be, obviously in the distant future, when we've got some time, um, this is gonna be a labor of love, cleaning this up and, and re-mortaring, um, repointing all these walls. That is a day that I long for, is that when I can actually get the time to be able to, um, and uh, yeah, that, that's a day that I really look forward to because that will mean that we've finished everything else. But um, but when you see, you know, the height of this, this, when you see, is it as tall as me? Yep, it's actually taller than you. Is it? And it's, this isn't even the bottom of the wall. You know, the bank's going up and we've got loads of stone that's, uh, that's obviously either fallen down or like to say, could be part of something else. Um, but yeah, it's a lot of work to do here. There's a huge swarm of wasps. Um, they look like they're coming from the top of that. Um, yeah, it looks like they're in the top of that hope that pipe that goes up, the ventilation pipe. I don't know if you can see the swarm on um, on the camera, but it's a huge swarm of wasps at the top of the ventilation pipe. I'm not getting any closer so you can see it, but. Um, I thought there was loads of wasps about. So, we're going to have to get somebody around to, to get rid of that. So, it looks like the plans, um, what we was going to do now, it's all clear, is to start staking out the area. But, um, yeah, I think we're going to have to give that a miss because we need to be up there and I'm not getting any closer. But at least we've cleared it all. Um, looks a lot better now just being able to see the area and what we've got um, now what we need to do is figure out the measurements from the edge of the house so that we've got enough space to have the degreaser tank then the septic tank and then the epandage, which is the filter bed, which will come all the way down. But the filter bed has to be 35 meters away from the lake. So we're measuring it out and I stepped it out and it was 32 to the end there. Um, so we might be in a bit of problems, but um, hopefully when the lady comes on Tuesday, she can let us know a solution to it. So, that was Hello. our week again at Chateau de Montmagne, week four of year two. Week four of year two. <laughs> four of the two. Um, I think we've got loads done, actually. I'm really pleased with what we've got done. It's been uh, it's been good, actually, yeah. And um, the apartment I mean, looks like a, uh, yeah. a room now, a proper apartment. Yeah, so. it does. We cleaned up yeah, a bit of stuff and stuff, put a, bit, a little bit of furniture in. Um, I've really enjoyed the day. Have you? Yeah, getting out on the lands, doing a bit of thing. We didn't get quite what we wanted to done because of the uh, wasps. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was fun. But I, I do. The more I ride my tractor, the more I enjoy you that. You do like your tractor. Um, but it's not just that. It's the what it does and what it affords us to do that, to clear land. 
to make it available you yeah. know that's a really it's a really brilliant thing for that you know and and yeah and um so that's been really excellent it has so that's our week um we'll see you again next week before we go we'd just like to say a big welcome to our new patron this week kat Lindsay. welcome on board thanks welcome, for joining the kat. team thanks for coming on board and yeah. um yeah Brilliant. we'll see you all again next oh i'm gonna do quickly i'm just i'm gonna do i'd like to apologize to everybody that over the last few weeks i've been a bit um lacking in responding to the youtube comments we do listen to all of the comments we read everything we do read oh i said everything. listen didn't i yeah read no we read we read as well um, as listen <laughs> i listen to lisa reading them out <laughs> but um it, yeah we've just been so busy the, these last few weeks that being able to respond them all to them individually has been quite difficult um so on wednesday i'm going to do a mid midweek video and it will be us kind of um responding to some comments we're just going to pick out it's going to be a quick video pick out some of the comments that have been have our sort of questions that we might want to respond to um so we're going to do a quick midweek video yeah and we might do that kind of every other week um just to uh to be able to answer your questions that's quite a good one um i need to apologize to you lovely people um because some of you uh, and i'm not saying all um were possibly keen to have a look at uh, the butchery because we got our pig we got we did, our got half, whole a half a pig so we got 33 kilo uh was the pig um because it came so late in the day i shot up to the farm and and kind of watched you do it apologies for not doing any video but it really wasn't the time and the place um what we're what i'm going to hope to do is do a special kind of video and some people have mentioned about doing the farm to fork thing. So and we'll probably gonna, do a separate video for that. We're going to do a separate video for that. You know, please don't panic. There's going to be no, um, you know, graphic details of butchery or anything like that. There won't be that sort of thing. It's really about explanations and stuff like that. But uh, apologies for that. But one thing we have got is a freezer full of pork. I've got to get some pork recipes now. Charlene, oh, get on the case. <laughs> no, no, there's some beautiful bits there. Beautiful bits. So, so, we'll see you all next week. Take care, everyone. Love to you all. And thank you so much for supporting us. See Take you. care. See Bye. you later. Bye now. Bye. <laughs> Don't you think this is a lovely light to do the video? So how beautiful does that look? It's a beautiful evening. It's a beautiful evening. And the thing is, you know, like, what is it? After ten past quarter past nine, it's still light. Look at that moon up there. I know right? it's stunning. Gorgeous it's moon. Stunning. Do you love me? Of course, I love you. Always. <laughs>we would like to say a huge thank you to all of our supporters from our patrons to our gofundme donors the people that are buying us a coffee on go buy me a coffee and you our subscribers each week watching the adverts for us to give us a little bit of income each month even if it just adds up to a bag of sand it all helps thank you so much for sticking by us for the past year let's hope there's a lot more to go take care everyone see you all next week bye bye
tell you I don't care, but it's a lie. 